Happy Scorpio season. So today we're gonna to be looking at Lunar Tides in the color Cyan and Fuchsia Pink. My swatches are labeled one through 12, but that is not synonymous with the hair levels. It's just to help us keep track of each swatch because I do like pictures and video clips near the end of the video. They are human hair swatches, but the only one that is gonna be virgin hair is gonna be the number four black swatch. The rest have been chemically colored or bleached at some point in their lifetimes. One is green. This mix should be on the purpley side and oftentimes when I do purples, I do get requests to do green swatches. So we'll see how it looks over the green. Number two is gray. Three is a natural red. Four again is black. So four to 11 is a range that goes to platinum blonde. And then number 12 is like a toned version of number 11. For my mix videos, I like to do two separate parts so we can see a range that we can get. So the top half will have one ratio and the bottom half will have a second ratio. So for the first ratio, it's gonna be a one to two ratio. So that is gonna be one part fuchsia to two parts cyan. So Scorpio season is roughly between October 20th to November 22nd, but that can change every single year. And that's why whenever you go on websites, it's usually like a rough estimate that they give you. If you were born on either of those dates and you're not really sure if you're a Libra, a Scorpio, or a Sagittarius, you can use a website like astro.com. As long as you have your birth time, you can find out your sun sign, which is the sign that we associate with ourselves and find out whether you're a Scorpio or not. This is becoming more common knowledge than it used to be, but every planet actually has a sign associated with it for when you were born. And I actually have my moon in Scorpio. So I have now revealed all of my placements. <laughs> I am a Pisces sun, Scorpio moon, and Aries rising. This year, 2021, I believe Scorpio starts around October 23rd. I think it's like 4 a.m. roughly Central Standard Time, which is my time zone. So that does actually mean if someone is born before that time this year, so say they're born at midnight, October 23rd, they're still gonna be considered a Libra, which I think is pretty cool. So our second ratio is gonna actually be equal parts. And this is gonna be the color I was imagining when I was thinking for Scorpio. So one part fuchsia pink to one part cyan. So let's talk about why I chose cyan and fuchsia to mix together. So Scorpio is a water sign. And depending on whether you're looking at modern astrology or ancient astrology, it can be ruled by either Mars or Pluto. You can definitely think of both as your ruler too if you are a Scorpio. In the Aries video, we talked about Mars because Aries is also ruled by Mars and how Mars is the ruler of boldness and aggression. Therefore, the color being red because that's often what we associate red with as well. Pluto, on the other hand, is named after the god of the underworld. So it tends to be represented by deep blues and also deep reds and stuff as well, even black. So I had the idea of keeping that depth of Pluto and mixing together those like deep blues and deep reds to get a nice like burgundy color or maybe even a warmer toned purple because to me that is so Scorpio. <laughs> I'm gonna let these sit for about three hours so they can really absorb the color. Once they are rinsed out and dried, I will meet you back here and we can do some comparisons. First thing I wanna say is that I do have a code with Lunar Tides. So if you like this mix or any other Lunar Tides product, you can use my code FLOXY to get 15% off. This is an affiliate code, so I do make a small commission when you use it. But of course, that always goes right back into my channel. And thank you so very much if you do use it. I always feel like one of those tarot card readers when I hold that up. <laughs> okay, so this is not the intended color I had in mind for Scorpio. So I forgot that when you swatch the fuchsia pink, it looks a lot more red in undertone. And then as it sits, it gets more cool toned. So with that being said, I still like what happened here and I think it's very beautiful. I'm gonna just say this was not my intention. I actually expected this top half to look like the bottom half and then the bottom half was gonna be 
in my mind a little bit more red. So maybe if I would have done the equal parts on top and then maybe a one to two ratio, but with two parts of fuchsia and one part of cyan, I would have maybe got what I wanted. I'm not sure, but I still think it's pretty Scorpio. I will give a hint though that <laughs> my Sagittarius mix is also going to be a purple, which is why I was hoping this would turn out more on the red side, but I'm hoping they'll be different enough. So number one was green. There is no green showing through, which is great, but it does seem to turn out a lot darker than like the blonder swatches did, especially the top half that turned out more purple. On the green swatch, it almost actually looks close to like a black. It's not black, but that's how dark it kind of portrays itself to be. Whereas on the ends, you can see a little bit more of the color coming through. Number two is gray. That swatch usually turns out a lot more cool toned in comparison to the blonde swatches. And I think that held true, but it's not a huge, huge difference. Overall, it turned out a little bit darker. And I feel like you see a little bit more of a difference on the bottom half. I feel like the bottom half looks even more purple than it does over here, but still really pretty. Number three is interesting. That was the natural red beforehand. It actually feel like it turned out kind of similar to number seven. They almost have like a natural quality, both the top and the bottom, but there's like a hint of a little bit more color from the angle I'm looking at. It's kind of hard to tell if you can see the purple on top. We might be able to see that better in my close-ups when we do it in natural lighting, but the ends do have like a nice hint of like a magenta, but again, still on the natural side. Number four is the only one that didn't have any difference, but I will say that five and six still look relatively brown, um, especially five. I can see like a hint of like the pinky tones coming through here, but especially if your hair is virgin, I don't really know how well that would show up on your hair. So I can't really recommend it. Compared to number five, I feel like I see a little bit more color on number six, but again, it's very, hard to see. Um, maybe like the number three, maybe we'll see a difference more so in the natural lighting when I do the before and afters. I feel like you would at least need to have number seven's lightness or lighter, but honestly, I think the eight in comparison to number seven turns out a little bit better. Just looks a little bit more saturated, a little less brown, but if you're going for a more brown look, then having the number seven colored hair is probably okay. But regardless, like I kind of just said, <laughs> if you have virgin hair, can't really guarantee how well your hair is gonna hold on to the color. So I think it looks the best on nine through 11. 12 looks nice too, but it's similar to number two where it turns out a little bit darker, a little bit more cool toned. On nine through 11, I feel like it's a lot more saturated. Can really see like the purple and the like magenta-y color coming through, which I don't even know if I consider that magenta. It's really, really purple. <laughs> I'm just not sure what to call it because it is quite pink for a purple, but it's not quite as pink as a magenta is, you know? So for our first comparison, I did just wanna quickly throw in the Lunar Tides Fuchsia Pink so that we can see, especially on the bottom, just how different adding the cyan makes it. This is comparable to number 12, number 11, number 10, and number nine. <laughs> now, especially compared to the fuchsia, this definitely doesn't look that pink. So I don't know. Um, I do think if I were to redo this again, I maybe would have mixed Grand Baby with Cyan to get a slightly more red look or even one of their other reds. The fuchsia for Lunar Tides just is slightly more cool toned than I was expecting because the Manic Panic fuchsia is slightly more red. But again, I do think my mix turned out very beautiful. It's just, I feel bad because it's not what I was expecting, you know? <laughs> so usually when I'm doing my comparisons, I do like to look at my more popular brands first to see if there's anything similar, just because I know those tend to be more easily accessible for everyone. I highly doubt I did all of the purples for Manic Panic. I, 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 like, I already know of one that I haven't done yet, so I don't know if there's other purples that are even more similar to this, but the most similar one that I had is Purple Haze from Manic Panic. This is comparable to number 12, number 11, number 10, and number nine. So the Purple Haze is a slightly more warm toned purple and it was actually one of my more similar purples. I looked at Arctic Fox's Purple Rain or now called Purple AF and that one was much more cool toned, not as similar. Um, obviously the Purple Haze 
is a lot darker on top with the direct dye. And um, if we're comparing it to the top half, it's actually a lot more warm toned and undertone wise is probably a little bit more similar to the bottom half, but depth wise, it's again, much darker. So you can almost compare the diluted section to this, but it does look like I dil diluted it a lot. So it's hard to say if they're a perfect match, but out of most of my purples, this was one of the more warm toned ones that I've done. I have one more that I did that was even more warm toned, which is going to be our next comparison. To me, this actually looks like it'd be kind of in between these two because it's definitely warmer than this, but maybe a dash cooler than this. So if this mix was darker and I had like a middle swatch, I feel like this would be a good option. And as always, if you have any experience with these dyes, like especially purple haze, if you've diluted it just a little bit even to lighten it up, I would love to hear how it turned out on your hair. So my next comparison is the brand One and Only in their color Neon Purple. This is comparable to number 12, 11, 10, and a nine. So again, this one turns out a lot darker on the direct dye portion. And then as you dilute it, you get what I consider to be more of a magenta color. So you can see in comparison just how purple this still does look, even though it pulls pretty pink for a purple. So I would consider this part maybe like if you only added a dash of cyan to a fuchsia mix, it would probably look a little bit more like this. But obviously this is the diluted version of the neon purple. So out of the two, the Manic Panic Purple Haze is definitely much more similar, but this here was pretty much what I was expecting my Scorpio color to turn out like. So I thought I would show that as well. So now I'd like to get into our before and after clips. Those as well as any like photos you see near the end of the video will all be done in natural lighting.
I hope this video helped. If you have a request, I do have a link below to a Google form you can fill out. Just remember, I only do brands that do not test on animals. Thank you so much to my patrons. Thank you so much for watching. And thank you if you use my code Floxy at Lunar Tides. <laughs> and I hope to see you in my next video.